Welcome back. Welcome back. I, I don't even know where to go after last episode. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, is there, so, I mean, you've been, you've been with, uh, your wife a, a long time now, um, which it, it, it always baffles me because when I first met you, I thought you and Julia had been together much longer than you had. I didn't realize I was basically meeting you right as y'all had gotten together. So yeah. in my mind, you've always been with her way longer, but like, did you not have like things that you checked about, about before you started dating someone? I know this was our topic for last episode, but I, I feel like there's more we can expand on here. Um, so I guess there always is things that would technically be considered like the deal breakers. Like if you never wanted to start a family um, because I wanted to have, you know, a family, if you uh, some of the things, one of the things ironically was the fact that I wanted to make sure that um, if we were going to stay together long term, she didn't want to stay in this area forever because I don't plan on staying in DC area forever. And somehow we're still fucking here. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> But well, you bought, you fucking, you submitted it even further by buying a damn house. Well, no, that doesn't mean anything. We can rent the house out. We're, we I guess. But I feel like you need that... to be somewhat local to your rental properties. Yeah, you uh, rent, I, you yeah, the rental property managers. You rent a property management companies that you can get. Uh, I mean, okay. Okay. It's like, that's not a All big right. deal. And we can rent them out for, there, there's no shortage of ability for us to rent this out for our mortgage payment. Um, gotcha. Unless like Trump causes nuclear war with North Korea and you know <laughs> washington dc doesn't exist anymore that might have a problem uh but i and some uh, like other things are just i i always want to make especially when i was older like we didn't start dating until i was you know in my 30s and i wanted to she was also you know in her 30s because she's older than i am and it was making sure somebody who has got a career or a career path and a, like a goal and aspirations and isn't just like a you know kind of a freeloader that's doing nothing and you know whimsically living off of like other people type of deal but that was pretty clear from the beginning you know i met somebody who works in as a physician <laughs> he was a physician who worked in informatics like it was like that was already that box was checked like early on i mean like ask the right. questions so how'd y'all meet at a bar oh okay i've always been afraid to. i've never met anyone at a bar not uh, that i've met a lot of people but <laughs> Never met anyone at a bar. Never. Yeah. I, mean, I guess I've never given myself an opportunity to meet. Yeah, I've actually met quite a bar, quite a few single. people at bars. I, I, I've met more people at bars that I would start dating. I've dated a couple of people I've met at the bars, and then we realized that we weren't like compatible, but we still would hang out at the bars all the time together. Like we still mm -hmm. became good friends. Realizing that how we do just you compatible. do you just start talking to people randomly? Sometimes. Like how do you go? So, okay. so sometimes it was like back when I lived in in Flint, we were you know the the bar scene was pretty big in the Flint area, and there was one local bar that pretty much everybody that was in my graduating class from both the towns that I grew up in and the town next to us that I used to work in all the time. Uh, my graduate class, my sister's graduate class was the year before me and like the year after me. They were like a, the hangout for these places. And part of it was you just went there enough. That was where you went. It was really cheap to drink. That's where everybody socialized. You'd start running into the same people you'd see on a quite frequent basis or whatever. So you start to meet just people because you see them there all the time. As well as we started mm -hmm. to get to know the wait staff extremely well. Who were people, most of them were girls who graduated in my class at, like, one of the two schools. And um, we started hanging out with the wait staff when they would go out on their, you know, the, the, the bartenders. So the, when they would right. have their hangout fun day. So we start meeting their friends who would then come in to visit, like, it just kind of, like, was a perpetual, it, like, a close group of friends that turned into just this big group of friends. And that was just right. the way that this scene was. DC is different. Uh, DC, I've never gone to a bar and seen like the same groups of people at bars when I go to a bar somewhere. It's always different, unless you're going for like a karaoke night or something like that. Then it's always the same fucking people who try to run the karaoke scene like around here. God, um, a karaoke. <laughs> this was completely <laughs> randomly when I met my wife. It was we went to I, somebody from the emergency department was moving on uh, to a different, moving to a different state. So it was like a, a goodbye. <laughs> they were dying. They were, they were moving on, moving on through life. Uh, they were moving to a different state and getting a different job. So it was like a goodbye party for this person. And I had just left uh, working a, in the floor to go to uh, informatics as well as I had just like stopped seeing the girl that uh, you know, I had been seeing. I was a little bit like sad and depressed about it, but still all these friends, they were like, Hey, you're going out for this person's, you know, 
I just let a pick break. Oh, Jeff! God damn it. We're going to bed. God damn it. I think it's still one down. No, maybe not. I think I broke it. I got to go up and get a pick anyway, so I'll head up to the, I'll head up to the top. Um... I think we're almost done <laughs> this this digging, uh, but we were there for this other person's goodbye party, and um, she denies it. Well, that didn't go so well for you. Mm-mm, it didn't go well for me at all. I'm in the bed. Uh, you're in the bed. Yeah. Oh, because you spawned right next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, I'm still running up to the top. Um, she denies this to this day, but I know this was to happen. She came over to our table and was hitting on one of the other people that was there. And Who, she, Julia, cla- yeah, yeah. Ah. And she claims that, oh no, they were trying to hit on, she was there with her sister, that they were trying to hit on her sister. So she came over after they tried to hit on the sister and was trying to like feel them out to see if they were a good match. And I'm like, I uh-huh. know what was really going on. You know, you were over here hitting on my friend in Im- Imran. Right. You know what? But, like this. What'd you do? Okay. You're just going to wait? Hold on. I, I can't. I'm, I can't. You didn't get in bed fast enough. I'm in bed now if you just wait. I can't. It's well, impossible. If you just stayed dead. It's more like that, Jeff. <laughs> dead boys tell tells. <laughs> I'm looking at my chat now that I'm in bed, too. I mean, my mind was... Uh, was Saying, oh, he's about to break his pick. He's about to break his pick. <laughs> How many fucking hitboxes do you have? Okay, I'm in bed. I don't know why you went way up there to a bed. There's a bed right here. Well, oh, because I was, I don't know. Oh, you know what I just realized, too? The way this RTMP server um, runs, the uh, my, my fraps counter is sporadically coming in the corner of the stream. Huh. That's weird. Um... <clears throat> But, and then we started talking, and I realized that she was in informatics and as a physician, so we started talking based on that, and then, um, it still was a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult to get her to go on the first day. Like, we exchanged numbers that night, and then, um, I think I tried to call her a couple times, and she didn't ever return the phone calls, and then, like, a couple weeks later, she, like, texted me and was like, oh, sorry, I've been doing something else, do you want to hang out, and... Uh, I've been doing someone else. <laughs> yeah, basically, like <laughs> I've been doing, I've been doing so, someone else. I don't uh, no, well, so did I ever tell you about our first date? No, I don't think so. so. Maybe I don't, but I don't remember if you have. So she, when we had a date, we were supposed to go to dinner, and she kept uh, right before she kept texting me and saying, "Hey, I'm out with my sister for her birthday. Uh, we're gonna have one more drink." Um, so delay a little bit. I'm not going to be ready to go to dinner yet. And about an hour and a half later, she texted again. Oh, we're still here at the bar, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to delay this a little bit, a little bit longer. And I'm thinking, okay, like, whatever, this is, fuck this. this is, yeah. Uh, so then she goes, she writes me back and says, you know what? I'm actually not going to leave, like still here with my sister. Why don't you just come meet us here? And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I guess she's not trying to just blow me off. Like it was she's right. telling me to come now. That's m- so weird. Though. I'm not ready to meet your family on your first date. Meet her, meet her there. Um, but her sister's like, you know, just a, a year or two younger than her. It's just, you know. P- well, so what, you can just date them both. You get to choose. Yeah, I get to date them <laughs> Multiple both. No, choice. no, but it's just another like hangout. It's like hanging out with a friend at the bar type of deal, you know. Right. Um. So we go, and this place had a really weird uh it was like a Memorial Day or something like that. It was like Memorial Day or Labor Day. It was one of those holidays. I can't remember which one. And they had this special, and it was buy one, get one free. But you bought a drink, and you basically got a little voucher for your second drink. So you didn't have to get them both, like, right that second. Right. So it was just really weird the way that this whole voucher system worked. So I went to the bar, and I see her there. And I sat down next to her, and I ordered a drink, and I got my you know, drink and then my little drink coupon. And I was like... She's sitting next to, like, her sister was nowhere to be seen at this moment when I get there. And she's just sitting next to this other guy. Or she, she had given me the, an address of a place to go. It was just, like, come to this address. And it was, like, I'm, like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Like, is this a bar? Is this, like, a person's house? Like, I didn't know at the time. She was just out with her sister right. having drinks. But it was turned out to be a bar. So I go inside, and there's this dude that's, like, sitting next to her, but, like, like kind of all up on her. Basically talking real close, real quiet. You can tell that they're both quite wasted. Um, wow. And I was just like, 
So I order a drink. Okay, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know anything about it. You know, she maybe she just has, like, you know, close friends that she's here with. Like, I don't know the situation. I'll just get a drink and start talking to her. So I started talking to her, and she's basically, like, almost ignoring me. And I was just like, uh, okay, so... <laughs> I, so she's like, oh, yeah, thanks for coming. We're just hanging out. Sorry, uh, you know, we have had too many drinks and uh, didn't want to leave. And my sister was having fun, so still, like, wanted to hang out with her. I'm like, I don't know where your sister is anyway. But then she basically, like, just turned back and started, <laughs> know if you have a sister. Just started talking to this other guy again. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I'm getting ready to leave. I was getting, like, frustrated and just like, this is stupid. What am I doing here? Like, obviously, this girl is... She's blowing me off on the, the date, and then when I even get there, like, she tells me to come, but she's not even talking to me, so, like, yeah. this is stupid. Well, I'm going to drink my drink, but you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to drink my drink, and I'm going to drink my free drink, you know, because I've got my voucher <laughs> for my free drink. It ain't going to waste. But there was these other guys that were at the bar that were, like, hanging out in a group that were – that turns out her sister was talking to all these other guys. It was just this group of, of friends that were there. And I ended up meeting, running into and finding out it was her sister randomly because – um. I don't know why, because there was not that many people in the bar at the time. And uh, these guys were really friendly, and they were just like, oh, hey, man, what's up? Oh, you came here, came here to, you know, she's, you're supposed to go on a date with her, and now you're here. And they're like, yeah, she's going to have a lot to drink today. Whatever, just come hang out with us for a little bit. And so I'm just bullshitting with these dudes and, uh, and her sister. We're all having a good time and talking. Her sister goes back up to the bar and sits down with with uh, her again. So I'm just hanging out with these guys thinking, okay, this is whatever. Like, I guess I just got some drinking buddies now until I'm done. Yeah, until date I'm is done. over. <laughs> uh, date, date is finished. And kind of the guy who was like hanging all over her when I walked in comes walking over and he's talking to me. And he turns out to be a really cool guy as well, but he introduces himself to me. I was like, okay. This now is, you're on a date with this, him. Well, this is like a little bit <laughs> awkward. And, uh, <laughs> So I get, I end up getting my second drink and I'm kind of getting ready to leave, but now she's come over and joined the circle as well, but we still haven't really talked much. And she's like, Oh, Hey, how's it, you know, how's it going? We're talking a little bit, but not that much. I'm still like getting ready to go. And this guy goes, he says something about, God, I can't remember exactly what he said. Um, and this guy sitting next to me is like, he's like, yeah, you're uh, you're pretty cute. And I was like, Oh, Thank you. And I kind of started looking around for a minute. And the guy, the guy, who, the guy who was originally all over Julia was sitting there and he goes, he starts laughing because he could see that my eyes didn't really realize what was going on. And he goes, you realize this is a gay bar, right? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't realize this is a gay bar. And he goes. Oh, because he wasn't the one that said it was. I, he's the one I had said that I was you know, there, like to go on a d date with her or whatever. So he knew that I wasn't gay, but this other guy that was talking to me was gay and was interested and was hitting on me the whole time, and I had no idea because I didn't realize she didn't tell me the name of this bar that I was going to. Not that I would have known it anyway, but apparently she didn't tell me the name of the bar because she thought I would not come meet her at a gay bar. So that's why she gave me an address as opposed to saying the name of the place. So then I realized that this guy that's hanging all over her is not because they're like hooking up because he's clearly and obviously like make, making it apparent that he's gay and he's there for like his boyfriend's coming to meet them in a couple minutes as well like at oh, this place so it ends up being just it was a really long like crazy That's fantastic night well and then like julie and i ended up going out to dinner with some other friends of hers uh ones that we still hang out with like today like not these guys i, I guess these guys that for some reason her sister knew a couple guys that wanted to go hang out at the gay bar but by the time i got there they were gone but these other group of gay guys had like seen these two girls sitting at the bar and made friends with them so they didn't really even know these people that were there until they were just there hanging out with them drinking, which mm -hmm. is why they stayed and kept drinking, because they were just having a good time. And yeah. um, what I didn't realize, and at one point, one guy was really into football, and he was talking about throwing these football parties every Sunday, and that I needed to come to him, and I had given him my phone number because oh my I God. was thinking, so, and I still, whatever, and if you're gay, like, that's fine. But he was giving it to me because he was hitting on, or he wanted it because he was hitting on me, and I didn't realize that. And I was just like, this is a cool dude that I'm going to hang out with. And he texted me when I left and was like, I know you claim you're not you're not gay, but uh, but come on, let's be honest. I got honest. your fucking number. And, and, <laughs> I was, and I was like, no, no, seriously, I am not gay. But I was like, I'm more than happy to come hang out with, you know, if you're having a football party because, you know, you're a cool, cool guy, watch football, like, I'm all about that. But no. No, trust me, I'm not gay. He texted me all night 
telling me descriptive elements of the things he wanted to do to me. And that's I, not cool. I kept telling him that I am not gay, but we could be, you know, be friends. But if he was going to continue to tell me these descriptive things, I was not going to you know, entertain a friendship with him anymore because he obviously didn't understand that I was not gay. And so I ended up not speaking to him anymore because he just kept it was like the no yeah. means no thing. He didn't get it right via text right. message. And I just so I just ignored him and never wrote oh, to him again. God. Mm hmm. That's the best story. Yeah, it was. Uh, I wish I could remember like all the because I remember. I think I, I think I might have made a YouTube video about it shortly after. Um, that was a little bit more descriptive. Now I can't remember if I actually did or not. If I was too embarrassed about like <laughs> not realizing I was in a gay bar the whole time or or something. But it was it was quite comical. Like it was very entertaining. And Julia was extremely. I'm surprised that we lasted after that day because she was so. You saw her when she got really drunk and slapped a guy at the bar. Like she was so <laughs> drunk, she ended up losing her purse on the on the sidewalk somewhere. Um, oh, right God. when we walked out of the bar and. Yeah, I don't know how we had actually maintained, like... She made you go to a strip club? <laughs> Not that night. Different night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, what there's some do? wild bars in DC. Not I'm like not just like gay bars or whatever, but like that fucking that Russian tea house that we went to. <laughs> the tea house that was the weirdest That's thing. I've ever seen. Craziest bar I've ever been to in my life. It's uh and we just coincidentally where you happened to stay was not walking distance to anything, which is how we ended up there. Yeah, because it yeah, was like the closest thing we could get to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I end up staying where I stayed. I don't remember how that was even Probably decided. Probably cheap or something, right? Well, Badge was there. Oh. Was Badge staying? He close? wasn't staying at that hotel though. Oh. He was staying somewhere else. I think I just picked a Hilton because I had like a Hilton Rewards thing. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. I think I actually I think I may have had had like a um like a discount or something that I needed to use or some shit like that if I'm remembering right now. Well, and the, and that hotel would have been fine you, for general, but not if you wanted to go walk around and hit the bars. It was just yeah, not no. in, it was more in the, like, business district of, you know, government work. You know, if you were right. there for a conference, you might be going to stay at that hotel. All right, it's time to sleep again. So There's jump from a bed down here. Jump from a cliff. Man, so what happened? What happened was, uh, <laughs> I was in the bed up here. <laughs> There's this bed right below us, right down there on the I'm ground. Going all Jeff, the way to the right? top. I hate you. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> Um, a little zombie boy came up and started beating me up and knocked me out of bed, and then he knocked me down a hole. That was the story. And I could have got it down, but I didn't realize what was happening in time. Okay, I'm in bed. Just to I say, dude fell from a high place twice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone that subscribed. Thank you. I'm I'm. I'm I'm not ignoring you. I'm just recording, and so I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. Good's mind, <laughs> and his multiple personalities. Oh. <laughs> it's so crazy how far you actually have to go before you even see the area we're digging at now. When you're coming from the top, yeah, we're getting there. Like we close. are so close. It is, it is crazy. Oh, you were saying that you had been given a suggestion for what we should do after this? No, I wasn't saying that. I was saying that uh, Breon said he had plans for something oh, we could Breon do. Oh, Breon has said he had plans. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what his plans are, though. I, so I don't do they involve know what the that means. server? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something on here. The, the next project on here. But I don't know what... But... What it, is it something is. we'd know how to do? <laughs> Cause, Probably you know, not. Because, I mean, <laughs> like, keep in mind, we would st we would be many, 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 many blocks back um, had he not come in and made some contraption to help with the uh, filling of the ocean easier, right? I think all he ended up using was sand in the end, wasn't it? Oh, did he just do it manually? Yeah. Damn. Well, yeah. glad, glad that he did that. Oh, uh, yeah, I am too, because... I mean, he ended up finding enough sponges around that once he made the, like, grid with the sand, he could just drop down and put sponges all the way down. Um, so, there was that, I guess.
Yeah, my speed. inventory just fills Somebody up did. so fast. You do know there's one right at the bottom here, right? Uh, like if you go to the corner and drop down and spam your Elisha so that you don't fall and die. Um, I, I take it you're in it right now? Yeah. Well, then now I know where it's at. These slimes are going to be... Once we plant, they won't. That's just... Just got to plant. There we go. Yeah, I didn't know this was down here. I mean, did you not have that exciting of a first day story with your wife? Um, well, so with Crystal, um, we didn't, it, no, it's, I mean, I think I've told you the story before. Like I was dating a girl named Aaron and, um, me and Aaron broke up and I was still infatuated with Aaron and, uh, like they were all in the same like friend group. So there was like Aaron, a girl named Lee, and there was Crystal and other, other people. Um, but we used to go and have like lunches and stuff together. Um, so that's how I, I had known Crystal. I'd actually, the, the very first person I met when I moved to Rock Hill, uh, the first day riding the bus, I met her brother, but he never, ever told me he had a sister. Um, so he was actually the first friend I ever had um, at the school. But uh, I never knew that for, for years later. Um, but uh, so uh, we, we, we would go on these like these these lunch dates or whatever, um, the whole the whole group of, of friends. And we were at one of these and um, Crystal was sitting beside me like she had a crush on me like she was. She was the one that was definitely into me, um, and I was still infatuated with trying to get back with Aaron. Um, but she, she, she said at the lunch, she's like, "You know, for twenty five dollars, I'd give you a blowjob." And I like threw twenty five dollars at her at that point. And then like after we left, she's like, "Do you want me to come to your house tonight?" And I was like, "Sure." Like I mean, I didn't know where the fuck this was going. And um, so she, so I came and picked her up that night, and she came to my house. And like where we lived, I had like my own entrance to the house, like a little patio, um, and like a living room type area, and like a bedroom. So like I had like my own into the house. Um, so it wasn't even like you know my mom knew anything that was going on in my room. Um, so you know we we basically hooked up that night. Like we both were virgins, and she was like, I don't want to be a virgin anymore, and I was like, I don't want to be a virgin anymore. And so we just had sex, so and then you, like so your relationship was based on prostitution. <laughs> I she gave me the money back. I didn't pay her for sex. <laughs> um, so it was a, it was a she, refund. A charge, yeah, yeah. She a gave charge me, back. She gave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, for the longest time, my whole way of trying to have sex was basically asking people if they wanted to have sex, and then it it, it that's basically a, that's didn't a good work start until when you just force it on somebody. That usually leads to other kinds of problems. <laughs> Um, but she was the first one that, that actually or worked with. I guess she already had a crush on me, anyways. But beforehand, we discussed the whole dating, and I told her I would, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want a relationship. I was more interested in Aaron than anyone else. Blah 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 blah. Uh, did, so you, did you also just, tell her as a version that you didn't like squirters? I didn't know at that time. <laughs> um, wasn't th this wasn't a, on my checklist? Um, this is a new checklist. Uh, but um, so we did that, and I mean, as as first times probably often go, it wasn't like the most gratifying sexual experience of your life <laughs> like didn't last super long or anything like that um and that took her home and on the way home she asked me again if we could date and i was like we, we had the conversation ahead of time like no and um then like a week later she's like well the first time wasn't great you want to do it again uh and see if we're any better at it and i was like sure and so the second time we did it um my mom called us because i was supposed to be coming up here like from rock hill for to see my grandma for the weekend and i was driving like after work and um so i picked up crystal brought her back to the house uh we were doing the thing and my mom knocks on the door and I opened the door and she's like why was your door locked and like crystal had gone out like on the patio at this point um she's like why was your door locked i was like i, I don't know i was you know i've been here packing to go up to my grandma's and she's like why are you all sweaty <laughs> i was like uh packing <laughs> Heavy packing. <laughs> Lots of packing. Um, <laughs> packing all the things in every hole I can stuff them in. I mean. <laughs> uh, and so she's like done. She, she fucking realizes this is not the, the true truth. And so she comes in my room and starts like going through like both the rooms, the closets and everything. And uh, then she goes out to the patio and there's Crystal. And, and she thought she didn't know it was Crystal. She was like, Aaron, get in here. And I was like, oh, oh God, it's not Aaron. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh and uh so she's like i'm taking you home and i was like ah and you shouldn't she's like 15. i, I, I was 17 Ooh. at the time um, <laughs> uh, and uh uh so she's like well you need to take her home and um so i, I took her home and uh and then like the next week aaron found out that we had had sex 
Um, and I thought Crystal had told her, and so I got really upset about it, and I didn't talk to her for like eight months or something like that. Uh, in the meantime, she got like accepted to the, the governor school thing that she she went to. Uh, I'm gonna put. Uh, well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk my life. I'm gonna go down a staircase since I don't have a best one. <laughs> um. <laughs> So uh, I was playing, I played this game with a good friend of hers, like a MUD, like uh, kind of like World of Warcraft, but tech space. I don't know if you know what MUDs are. Yes, I do. Um, but I, had, I played with one of her really good friends and Crystal got off to governor school and her friend started messaging me. This was like eight months in, in, in the future. Uh, at this point, I had moved out on my own and, and bought a trailer in South Carolina and was living on my own. And Aaron was my housekeeper because um, <laughs> I was still fucking hung up on this girl. Um, and so I like, I would still see her on a regular basis. She was just totally using me for money and like, she would come and pick up my car before, before school. She had a car of her own, but I had this, the cool new beetle. And so she wanted to drive that. So she'd drive her car to my house and switch cars to drive to school in my car. Um, meanwhile, we weren't doing anything at all. Like she had a boyfriend and like, I was just a fucking idiot. Um, and, uh, so uh, anyways, uh, Crystal's friend was messaging me on this mud, and she's like, you know, Crystal's still single, and she, she talks about you still sometimes, and I was like, you know what, you got her email, and so I just started emailing Crystal, um, and I was like, you know, all that shit went, went, went bad the way it did, but yeah, I'd like to, for it to, like, not be, like, like, not to hate each other, basically, and then so I went and picked her up from the governor's school that weekend, and we decided, like, you know what, let's, let's try dating. It was Valentine's Day, actually, so that's, that's, that's how Crystal and I got together. And uh, did she, is she the one who told Aaron? No, so, um, I, so at that, at that lunch thing, um, everyone saw the whole $25 thing and heard it and all this or whatever. So Lee, which was Aaron's friend, um, Lee, Lee was like, Lee was a special character. She, she like, like her and her friend, Ben, uh, claimed they were witches for an example, for example, just like one of the weird, like they were, they were very strange people. Um, so they heard it all happen. And like the next day at school, they were like, they tried to convince Crystal that she was walking different. And they were like, I bet you had sex, didn't you? You're walking different and all this stuff. And like, I guess the way Crystal reacted, Lee decided that like Crystal never admitted to it, basically. But Lee decided that that we had had sex. And then so they just started talking about it to everyone. And that's how it that's how the rumor spread, basically. Huh. That's strange and interesting that you guys still ended up getting together after. Yeah. The first time, um, like the second, oh, so the second time I brought her to my house, the first time I brought her to my house, I was working third shift at the time and, um, I was very tired. So I drove, I got off work, drove down to the governor's school, which was like a two hour one way trip. It was like a four hour round trip or whatever to go pick her up. Um, and, uh, brought her back to my house and I was just exhausted. And so like, I was trying to like hang out with her and I was like sitting on the couch and like, I just passed out and I would wake up like every two hours and she would just be sitting there staring at me. The TV wasn't on, nothing was happening. <laughs> She's just staring at me and like, I'd fall asleep again for like another two hours and wake up and there she is. It was the creepiest damn thing. Like in hindsight, like just this fucking psychopath just staring me down while I slept. Wow. Uh, uh, the second time uh, I brought her to my house, I end up like I don't know why. Like I, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I if I actually felt this way at the time. But like I felt like I needed to tell her I loved her, and so I like wrote it on this little note and gave it to her. And then she went into my bathroom in my in my bedroom and locked herself in there for two fucking hours afterwards. Why? I don't know. She was said she she well she went she was crying. I could hear her crying, and I was like, "What is what is going on? Like, what are you what are you doing? Why are you in Why are you in the bathroom?" And like, she wouldn't come out. And I was just like, I ended up just playing mud for a while. After after a while, I was like, "Well, I guess yeah, she's just staying there." And I don't know what's going on. So uh, so I, I I need more details, man. Like, what what, what did it turn out to be? Uh, I'm in the bed. More detail about the crying? Yeah. I mean, eventually she came out and all was well, and we like hung out the rest of the night. And you never, you never asked weekend. her like, did you? Was she crying because she didn't love you and was using you? And like, she I, when I talked to her about it, but later she said she was just overwhelmed. Like she felt overwhelmed. I mean, we're talking about you know, seventeen year old girl, sixteen year old girl, or whatever. She's got a lot of hormones and things. 
that'd be an interesting reaction. Like if that's my first time saying I love you to somebody and all they did was cry for two hours, I'd be like, well, <laughs> 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 there goes that uh, one. I think it's funny yeah. that you got caught. The, so the second time you ever had sex, you got walked in on by your mom. She didn't walk in. She knocked on the door. Oh, no, so she didn't door. like the second yeah. time I ever had sex. I got walked in on by her mom. Oh God. Mm. Yeah, that That's was real bad. That was interesting. Um, what never had that do? happen since, but what she what? What her mom do? Uh, she walked out and oh. and said she said oh my god and walked out and then basically we had to have a conversation later. She was really cool about it though, and she goes look. She's like, you guys are of age to do whatever you want to do. She's like, and they had left. It was basically, she had a little brother and little sister. It was like a, a, an 11-year-old and a, an 8-year-old or something like that. And uh, they had gone out to a soccer game for one of them. And something happened and they had ended up coming home early. And that's why they walked in on us. Um, uh-huh. And she was like, I just like, she goes, you should have locked the door at least. Because what if it was your little brother or little sister who had walked in? Like, the room. How are you going to explain that to them? So she was, like, cool about the concept of it all. Like, that didn't yeah. bother her too much. It was the... Uh, I imagine there was also a make sure you're using protection. Yes, there was a there was a make sure that you're using... That was the... This this person's... It was like her... It was her... This, this girl's stepmom, and it was, but it was her kids with... So the girl was living with her dad and her stepmom now, and it was the stepmom and her dad's two kids were the younger ones and i remember watching a movie with them one night and something came up in the movie about a condom and the eight-year-old said mom what's a condom and i was like oh my god where is this conversation about to go because we're all like in this living room together and she just like straight up goes condom prophylactic goes over the head of the penis during sex i and, just told and was like well, that yeah. was the craziest like just straight up you said it it's it, it's and he was like oh okay like yeah i clearly didn't understand what like it meant but it was <laughs> right. like she lied to him and he was like oh okay like and the question like didn't need to ask anymore about it and i was like wow that was that was entertaining <laughs> oh god that's good mm. so and and no for those wondering i did not finish <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, everyone's like calling the unit Marion's girl. I don't know how. I mean, like after it, it wasn't always like that. It, it you know, well, that was like they, the first they, few dates or whatever. It was right. like look, look, look at look at my wife and I. I just told the story of how we. You know, met at a gay bar. We didn't meet at a gay bar. I was invited to the gay bar for a girl to ignore me and ended up giving a gay guy my number, not knowing he was gay, like, while we were there. And we ended up married. Not me and the gay guy. Me and, you know, the wife. Weird things happen. Yeah. I mean, back then, if you, I wouldn't have, I would not have believed if you had been like, you're going to end up married to this person. I'd be like, mm-mm. In fact, the, the, <laughs> More, more to the things that you probably make me think you probably don't want to have anything to do with this person. Uh, like the third time we actually got together, she told me that the first time she saw me, God told her that we were going to be married and have a kid someday wow. um, and spend the rest of our life together. And I'm like, I was like, this person's a crazy person. And she told me later she used to sit like behind the school and like watch just to see me go to my car and stuff. So she like basically stalked me at, during high school. Um, wow. <laughs> Yeah. I, whenever she told me all that, like, my whole thought was, well, I don't believe in God, so, you know, I ain't gonna worry about this. Ain't that thing. <laughs> You're like, I wonder who this person is that's, like, hiding and telling her all these things <laughs> since God doesn't exist. <laughs> I was, yeah, Guru at North Red Flags, I was 16, 17, and 18 years old. Leave me alone. Like, you've never done stupid things. And it worked out for 20 years. Honestly, if I never started doing YouTube, we'd probably still be together. So it's YouTube. YouTube fucks up the monetization, fucks up Goot's marriage. <laughs> I mean, it's, lives. <laughs> uh, it's what they do. They should change their name to Fuck Up Tube. That would <laughs> uh, be it. Uh, well, oh, man. That slime bit back. <laughs> that slime bit back. <laughs> you did. God, we're just, we're never going to have picks again, Jeff, because you broke them all. I know, I know. We got this little area to finish, and then we don't have to worry about it anymore, right? Like, we just need to figure out how we get get that trade unlocked. Like, I don't understand why that trade is stuck. 
Yeah. And have you? Well, yeah, you haven't done the other trades, right? I've done some of the other trades. Yeah. I think you have to do more. Oh, I'm sure. Maybe it is that you have to do more, but it's so hard to just go do more trades. <laughs> we need to get like a bunch of zombie flesh to get emeralds. Like it's a whole process now to make that trade right. like be warmed up again. Um, I'm being a seance is coming into my mind, and it's telling me we have to do the last trade. We have to do the Not what? The other ones. The last trade. Whatever the last trade the thing has. Oh, I've done the last trade. No. I've done the, the, the last trade a few times. I think that's the one I did once or twice to try to make it open back up, and it didn't happen. I see. I see. That person was a fucking idiot. That was in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just fucking kidding. idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare you try to suggest something that may help us. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Well, we're done here, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. We'll see you. See you next time. See you guys next time.